I'm sure you know what cardiovascular exercise means, but do you understand how it changes your body and how the different types work in different ways? Keep watching whilst we look a bit deeper so you can really understand what is happening so you can make sure you get the very best from all your hard work. And if you stay to the end, I will give you the basis of a routine that you can build upon. Well, essentially, this relates to exercises that promote an improved capacity of the cardiovascular system. This is achieved through the contraction of major muscle groups in a repeated way, enough to elevate the heart rate. In the most basic sense, it is the body's ability to take in oxygen and get it where it is needed whilst removing carbon dioxide. As you start to work harder, your body requires more oxygen and creates more waste products. And once it can no longer keep up, you stop being able to sustain the same level of activity. The more it is pushed, the stronger and more optimized it becomes. Now, there are many ways to train your cardiovascular system. Let's have a look at some of the variations. Steady state cardio. This is simply a cardio workout that is a continuous steady effort. A run, a swim, a bike ride. Just something to get you working a bit harder, but not so hard that you will need to stop in the next five or 10 minutes through exhaustion. Think of being able to hold a conversation whilst you are running or cycling. Maybe not when you're swimming though. The other way is with interval training. This is where you break up periods of high exertion with periods of lower exertion or resting. Now, there are lots of variables you can play with here. Length of the intense period, length of the rest period, number of intense periods, and the level of effort you put into the intense periods. High intensity interval training, commonly referred to as HIT, is just a variation whereby you aim to train to total failure over very short time frames and repetitions. Okay, so that covers what you can do, but why should you? Well, you could end up fitter now and into the future, able to do more for longer and with a quicker recovery. And this will give you so much more confidence to approach everything in your life. It will also give you a longer life. In reality, I'm sure no one really wants to die. Well, I know I would rather not. Most just fear frailty and being surplus to requirements. But you see, if you stay fit, you will never be frail and you will always be doing what makes you satisfied. And that is what we all really want. Well, most of us, especially those taking the time to watch this video anyway. We want an extended health span and exercise is the cheap and easy fix to many of the problems that people face as they get older. So let's look a bit deeper to understand what is going on inside our body so we can tailor our schedule to suit our needs. Now this might get a little bit more complex, but stay with me, it will be well worth it. And I promise I will make it as easy to understand as possible. In order for the muscles of the body to work, they require energy. The way they get this is through ATP. ATP or adenosine triphosphate is always there, ready to go instantly. As it is used up, it is easily replenished and you can just keep going as long as you want. That is, if you do not exceed the rate at which the body can synthesize new ATP. At the most basic level, you need oxygen at the areas of extra work to make the required energy. This is the aerobic energy system, as it uses air. But then you start to work a bit harder. Now your body is demanding slightly more energy, and once you exceed the rate at which the new energy can be created, your body will now look for other sources. This is the anaerobic system, but this is not such a quick and clean process. And for that reason, it is also known as the lactate system. I'm sure you've heard of lactic acid. During the processes of glycolysis, hydrogen ions are released into the muscle cell. Without oxygen, these cannot be removed, and as a result, the muscle cell becomes increasingly acidic. 
along with an increasing internal muscle temperature. And this all reduces the efficiency of the energy conversion process to a minimum. And once a limit is reached, you need to stop whatever you are doing. Your body needs to stop using energy at the same rate to allow it to restock the fuel supplies, clean out the byproducts, and lower the internal temperature of the muscle. Lactate is what the body uses to remove hydrogen ions in order to protect the cell from being too acidic. It takes about 20 minutes for the system to recover to about 80% of maximum capacity, although recovery is a constantly fluctuating value depending on a myriad of variables, not least your level of fitness and you do not have to wait for an arbitrary point to go again. But in its most basic sense, that is how the system keeps you going. So now we know what is happening, how do we use exercise to get the maximum benefits for the minimum effort? Because unless you are an athlete, bodybuilder, or some other kind of fitness professional, well, I'm sure you've got other stuff to do with your day. Firstly, mix it up. Some steady state and some intervals. You see, steady state cardio is about teaching the body to be able to keep going in balance for longer and longer, making the supply of what it needs and disposal of unwanted products optimal. Whereas interval training is about teaching the body to maximize the ATP stores and make the resupply process as optimized as possible. They are both fundamentally important. So make sure you train them both. You should be aiming for a minimum of at least twice a week. But if you have a very sedentary job or lifestyle, you should really be aiming to try and do something every day. Mix up your sessions as well. Try longer sessions such as an hour at lower levels of exertion and mix these with shorter, slightly harder ones right down to intervals. Variation is good. It teaches the body not to overly favor one thing. And unless you are competing in a particular event, that's a good aim. Personally, I start my weight training days with a HIIT routine after a basic warm up. And then on the other five days, I do a mix of steady state cardio sessions of varying length and intensity, but never less than 40 minutes. But then I do sit a lot at a computer and reading. So I've got to make the effort. All that said, the best choices are the ones you enjoy and which you will do with the highest level of engagement into a long future. Next time, it is all about strength training to get the maximum benefit for the least amount of work. And if you have not seen the last one on why fitness matters, click here to watch that now. And if you've seen that, try this one that YouTube seems to think you might like. Thanks for dropping by.